Hey everybody and welcome back to Disco Elysium. It's been about a week, a little over a week since the last time I have personally played because of the, uh, the holiday Christmas vacations. So I've been away from home for a little bit. So hopefully I can remember what we're doing. Let's just check out this, this uh, building here. Bars cover some dusty windows. And what do I... Here, we're jumping right into it. I thought we were going to have a chance to, you know, have a little quick chat about the game, but no, we're just going to jump right into it. The remaining windows rattle from a strong gust of wind. They're covered in a thick layer of grime. They must have been like this for years. Uh, try to see inside or ask Kim if he can see inside. No, I mean, we'll try to look inside. Dripping water falls from a high place. All you can see is the shadow of a collapsing staircase. There's rust and corrosion on the bars. They're foaming with it and a small layer of white salt from the sea. Okay, so since we can't, can't see anything, Lieutenant, can you see anything? No. He shakes his head. The windows rattle in their frames. I won't even try, you know. Uh, he takes his glasses off. I had a partner once. They called him Eyes because he had to show me things. It's that bad. Um, oh. Okay. So they called him Eyes because he had to show you things because you have poor vision and you're wearing glasses. Gotcha. Okay. Can you still shoot, though? Well, actually... Uh, well enough, actually. It's odd how that works. I'm no sharpshooter, but I'd pass my shooting courses 7 out of 10. Uh, but you totally missed... The uh, the belt buckle when we were trying to get the hanging man down. So I guess that was one of the three out of ten times you failed. So around this way is just the pier again. Yep. And these are the two guys we talked to. Or the guy and his kid. Was there anything on this board? We probably already looked at it last week. Yeah, felt electrical. Yeah. Okay, we can't get back this way because there's a wall. So what I want to do, you know, it's getting kind of late in the afternoon of this in-game day. So I want to go talk to these people over here who I believe to be the cryptozoologists, perhaps. And then I want to run back and do some stuff in town unless we get distracted. It's very well that we get distracted. Tiny cages, carefully constructed. Tiny cages to catch a little insect, I guess. Maybe. These soggy logs smell of ignition fluid. Still, they won't bite up. It's almost impossible to get a fire going this near the ocean. Maybe these aren't the cryptozoologists, but I just want to check everything out before I actually talk to them. These heavy military blockades are riddled with bullet holes and crumbling. Okay, so give a chat to the guy with a backpack and a hat, setting up the cages. Here we go. Nice hey. and easy. No way out, little guys. Not out of this jam. Hey, it's Morel, the cryptozoologist. There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some sort of trap. He notices you. Oh, the police. Hello, officer. Hello, Morel. His self-conscious enthusiasm renders his movements ungainly. He looks like your understanding of a scientist. Is that the police? Why's the police here? Um, no reason. You know, your, the, your wife, uh, Morel, asked us to look for you. Don't worry, Gary. I'll handle it. You must be Morel, the cryptozoologist. You want to owe the pleasure. That sarcasm. He takes no pleasure from your appearance. Uh, you don't seem too happy to see the RCM. Lena sent me. She's been really worried about you and is waiting for you to get back. Ah, of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken, and we can't go all the way around the 881. Uh, it's not broken anymore. Yeah, that was me. I broke the water lock with my motor carriage, but it's fixed now. You can go back. Where the water lock's been fixed, it was fine when I crossed it. Yeah, let's not tell him it was us. There's no reason we should tell him that. Um, and also, we, we leveled up. All good. We should really be getting back. Gaddy could use a hot shower and a warm bed. Did he say we could go back now? Yes, Gary, and 
did the uh, voice actor that was recording Gary record his lines like in a bucket or what? Like had his head in a bucket inside a bathroom with horrible acoustics? I, I don't understand. Yes, Gary, we can go soon. If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. Hopefully we caught that. Kim was pretty quiet there. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the Phasmid has taken the bait. Then we're going. He refastens a bit of netting that has come loose on the wind. His hands are large and weather-worn, but also used to delicate, precise work. Um, tell me about this Phasmid you're looking for. Tell me about these traps. Lena seems pretty eager for you to return. How do you become a cryptozoologist? Um, tell me about the Phasmid. Tell me about that weird sticky insect. Hmm. Well, first of all, it's damn difficult to find, which is why we've been knee-deep in the reeds laying traps for it. And, uh, what makes it so difficult to find? I think we already know because we talked to Lena. Good question. Being a Phasmid of the order Phantasmodiae, a ghost insect, it disguises itself as plant matter, in this case the reeds. Awful lot of reeds around, aren't there? And I suspect it may have also developed other specialized techniques to protect itself from predators or scientists in our present case. And what are these specialized techniques? It's my hypothesis that it has evolved certain electrochemical defenses that allow it to interfere with animal perception, impeding pattern recognition, confusing the visual cortex, but I cannot describe how these defenses work, much less how they evolved, without studying a live specimen. A ghost insect, he said. These people are looking for a ghost. And, um, ghost insects, so you're ghost hunter, so he's probably not going to like that. No, that is precisely what we're not. We are zoological specialists looking for a extant species of phasmid. Okay, well, how big is this phasmid? I'm expecting it to be quite giant. One known species of phasmid called the Megaphasmodiae zuensis. It's about the size of a grown man's forearm, so... Are you sure? Because I've never heard of that. Why are you so interested in this stick bug? Are there more sensational animals out there? He flashes a sideways smile. Typical rookie assumption. Insects are much more sophisticated creatures than those unversed in zoology give them credit for. Even simply catching a glimpse of the Insulidian phasmid would be the apex of my, of any zoo cryptozoologist's career, but to study it and its defenses, find out how it stayed hidden for so long. Yeah, and what have you discovered so far? Very little, I'm sorry to say. No one's ever captured a specimen, so all of our information is based on first and third hand accounts. So no one's ever found one. Not yet. That's what makes it a cryptid. Hmm. Just out of curiosity, if there's no proof of, it, of its existence, how do you know it's real? I know it's real. The cryptozoologist says, brusquely enough that he even seems to be taken aback by it. It's clear that his obsession with the phasmid is driven by something more than the pure pursuit of scientific advancement. Are you sure it's just that you, you don't like your wife? And so you jumped into this field work so you can get away from her? By which I mean... I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly that the Insulidian Phasmid is more than mere superstition. Uh, well, Lena said there has been a sighting of it here in Martinez. Yes, yes, the most recent sighting was by a couple of teenagers along the coast here. That's what brought us to Martinez specifically. Was it Kuno? Because don't trust the kid. It's the first credible sighting in several decades. Admittedly, it's an unusual location for the species. But with all the sewage runoff upstream, it probably doesn't matter much anymore. Maybe it has died out. I have to resist the thought. Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it's generally thought of thought to be capable of parthenogenesis. I think that's like where you reproduce asexually. He means asexual reproduction. Hey, there you go. The females of the species don't need to mate to produce viable eggs. This makes it safer for a species with small population to survive. 
That's pretty clever. Are females reproducing without males a travesty, a crime against passion and common sense? This arouses no special feelings. I mean, no, I mean, that's a pretty cool feat of biology right there. That's pretty clever. Yes, the Insolidium phasmid is a very clever insect. That's why it's so damn difficult to catch. But as a scientist, I try to make, I try to my best to remain dispassionate. All right. Uh, tell me about your traps. Well, they may not look impressive, but Lena designed them quite cleverly, so I'm sure they'll do the trick. She designed these traps? Yes. And how do the traps work? Simple. Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel and having eaten its fill, can't get back out. At least that's the intention. The net isn't a perfect solution, but we d didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimen's delicate exoskeleton. And uh, what are you using as bait? Well, he's already told us. It's locusts. 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 Nearly all known phasmids are herbivores, of course, but we've hypothesized that the insulating phasmid might occasionally prey on other insects. Um, well, have you ever thought about putting some, you know, plants in there as well? In case you're wrong. I mean, maybe the locusts will eat your plant bait, but... You know, just in case the phasmid isn't carnivorous. Inside the traps, a number of locusts crawl and tumble over one another in a tiny, chittering swarm. A meat-eating stick insect. Does it pretend to be the reeds as part of an ambush? This seems unlikely. And a carnivorous stick insect. Seems unlikely. Thank you for your opinion. We've also included plant material in the traps to satiate your skepticism. Well, thank you. You could have just said that, and I could have stopped having my internal monologue like a minute ago. What will you do if the traps don't work? They'll work, I assure you. The predatory hypothesis using locusts as baits accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams which used plants. We've given this some thought. The traps do seem to be deftly and thoughtfully constructed. It's clear the cryptozoologist's wife knows what she's doing. Well, let me ask you something else. Um, how did you become a cryptozoologist? I've just always liked animals and puzzles. Searching for cryptids is a bit of both. So you're living your childhood dream. Why not just a zoologist? Real animals are puzzling too. Have you ever discovered a cryptid? Um, no, so you're living your childhood dream, huh? His eyes narrow. It's not child's play just because I have to traipse through the mud every so often. And, um, aren't real animals puzzling too? Real? I know you think one is a respectable profession, while the other is a superstition. Everyone does. I don't. It's a profession, just like any other. Honestly, being a cryptozoologist trumps most of the garbage I've seen people do. Cryptozoology does seem like a lot of wishful thinking. Um... Trumps most of the garbage I've seen people do. Well... I mean, it trumps some of the garbage, but I wouldn't say eh, cryptozoologists are better than everybody out there. No, it's just a profession. Indeed. My methods do not differ from any other scientists. I simply draw upon a wider variety of evidence. I have more hope that something truly surprising might happen. Okay, and has anything truly surprising ever happened? I have yet to catch a cryptid, if that's what you're getting at, but I have come close. Hmm, interesting. Something for later, this close call. Uh, what kind of evidence? Everything from forgotten regional lore to newspaper accounts like the one that brought us here to look for the phasmid, I keep a very open mind. He's interested in things that people believe that scientists don't. Okay, you think other scientists don't listen to ordinary people enough. Most establishment scientists only care about reputation and remuneration. Not real research, and certainly not the truth. They're a cowardly lot, and both the field and basement archives can be a dangerous place. I gotcha, sure. Okay, well, have you ever discovered one? Can you tell us more about that close call? No. Very few cryptids are ever discovered, and not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name, cryptid. Well, how many cryptids have been found total? Not just you. 
Of the list of cryptids kept up by the Cryptozoological Society of Chimene, which is 4,082 items long, about 2,000 have been confirmed as hoaxes. Okay, so 2,000 have been confirmed as hoaxes and none have been actually found then? Two are categorized as confirmed discoveries. The rest are in, inter are in differ differing blah, 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 stages of discovery, refutation, and data collection. All right, we're getting this uh, reading off to a great start. My tongue is not cooperating with me. So only two have proved to be real? Yes. The Xiaotouquan forest pygmy, who turned out to be an extinct species of primate, and a cave salamander from Yugograd, who is honestly quite unremarkable. It's in a zoo somewhere. We cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves, more even so than the public. Most cryptids are hoaxes, or they are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. Two out of four thousand is not even one percent! Or, then the Insulidian phasmid will be the third. I don't even know what to say. That's a small number discovery. No, I mean, keep to it, guy. Make it the third one. Indeed. He does not smile, just looks you in the eye. It's a forceful gaze. If our expedition is successful, every paper in the world will, will report on it. From Revachol to Beauchanteau, it will be a zoological miracle. The hair on your arm stands up. Electricity. It sounds like reeds hissing. Have we found it? Have we found the phasmid? He's clearly done his math on this. There's no surprising him or swaying his opinion. Okay, well, um, it's enough about that, sir. Uh, let's talk about specific cryptids. Alright, what cryptids precisely? I usually discuss these things with specialists, so I don't know what we would have to use, we would have to discuss, he wants to say, but sides against it. Um, which cryptid did you almost catch? You said before that you almost caught one. A willow person. It's a long story one non-specialist would find rather dull. Uh, nope. Not me. I read all this stuff to fill the YouTube time. Let's go. What are willow people? They're not people, really. Some argue that they're not even animals, as they seem to have evolved di directly from trees. He says it in a self-explanatory, everyday manner. They're very, very thin, almost flat. In fact, and can camouflage themselves easily, wrapping themselves around trees and blending in with the tree bark, and that way, they're not too dissimilar from the phasmid we're looking for here. You know, I don't think anything that's like almost flat, that sounds like unviable, cannot be living, something that's almost flat. Unless we're talking microscopic, but still. Wait, so I may have seen these willow people without knowing it. How did you almost catch one? Yeah, so I may have seen one. You probably have. And how did you almost catch one? Gary and I painted an entire grove's worth of trees in slow drying paint. It was a bright lavender color. I was hoping one of the willow people would get paint on it and not be able to camouflage itself. That was like a horrible idea. Like, did you just like pollute? And toxically kill like everything in the forest from your stupid paint. After hiding or waiting in hiding for hours, I saw a figure slip from one of the trees, a lavender shadow dashing among the grove. Um, it was any other kind of bug. And then I chased it with a net. Not very elegant, but you can't be elegant in the field. And well, it was faster than me. Was it just something blowing on the wind? A lavender shadow. Yep. Kim smirks. I don't think he's believing the story either. I know you think we were snacking on funny mushrooms. It's easier to mock someone than to admit that the world might be more interesting than you've imagined. Furthermore, I'm not saying it was a confirmed sighting. I'm painfully aware of what goes into verifying such things. There is a serious possibility that I saw a squirrel or a trick of the light. I am my own harshest critic. Well, did you find any trees that had a piece of... Uh, Lavender paint missing? Like you had painted over it and then it ran away? He makes it a real point here to sound falsifiable. Yeah, sure, okay. Well, tell me about any cool cryptids. Any cryptid you want to tell me about. No, just a cool one. No offense, officer. But I'm not much of a pedagogue. 
I don't know what I would have done if Lena hadn't persuaded me to go back to field research. You should ask her if you want interesting stories. Me? I'm not a people person, unless you haven't noticed. And I don't make a good lecturer. My strengths lie in field work and persistence. He brushes an errant strand of hair from his eye. Okay, well, let's change the subject. Um, Lena seemed pretty eager for you to return. And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave before we've finished with these traps. He looks south where Lena would be. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. Come on. She wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't try out, dry out soon. Um, I didn't know the phasma was so important to Lena. Oh, come on, you're doing this for yourself, not her. Let's, let's not be totally accusatory. Like, I didn't know it was so important to her. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting on record. One of our, one of only four this century, and it's hers. She's seen it? Really? She sighted the phasma? She didn't tell me that. Yes, that's that's how we first came to know one another, in fact. That's her story to tell, not mine. Suffice it to say, it's been long, or it's long been our dream to find proof of the insulated and phasmid together. I can't abandon course now. Uh, maybe you could go back to the whirling warmer up and come back to check the traps later? Or you should just give up on this bug hunt, or okay, I understand. I don't give up on things either. Well, yeah, like... Can you not, like, both come back? I know she's in a wheelchair, but you can push her, right? No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What would we do if the phasmid were to starve while we were sipping tea at the hostel? Does it have to eat that often? Like, it has to eat constantly? I'm not talking about you being gone for days. Hmm. I could go for trap setting. Uh, what if we check the traps for you? I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. Uh, cryptozoologist, cryptozoology and detective work are very similar. Chaos is my method. I am at Scion. Or I'm all in with this cryptid shit. I'm hooked. No, it's, it's like detective work, sure. Yes, indeed. Both require a great deal of research, attention and detail, and above all, persistence. Um, where are these traps? There are four in total, one to the south on this little peninsula by the boathouses there. It's very near. Another set in Land's End to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune on your way to the old radio tower after the church. I don't think we got that far. The third is set near the canal where you crossed by a concrete slab, a big thicket of reeds going up a slope, and among them... You should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, but still better safe and stupid than sorry. It seems like a lot. Do we really have time for this? Uh, yes. Yes, we do. The pursuit of knowledge is its own justification. Is it? He doesn't look too convinced. Uh, what do I do if there's a phasmid in one of the traps? Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. He's not comfortable with the possibility that you'll claim the find, but he's lying about this even to himself. And what if I encounter it in the wild? That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, he takes out a small white spray can. I spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insects to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the sight of you. It's quite potent. Lasts you about a week. Um, lay it on me. Lay it on me thick. Uh, I don't want this. Thank you. No. Let's, I mean, I, I don't think we want to just get some guy to spray weird stuff on us, but that's kind of our shtick that we're the wacky and crazy guy, so put it, spray me down, dude, but not thick, just regular spray. <laughs> he douses you with the odd sp smelling spray and then gives you a satisfied nod. This is the smell of dying reeds, of longing crumbling into the water. The lieutenant wrinkles his nose. I hope you're not buying this. He dispenses it without some, without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious, like holy water. Yeah, I'm not buying it. Like, it is precious. A single dose cost me fifty real to develop. Not that I expect you to understand self-financing ones on research. Okay, let's go. 
Right, which means you two can pack up and get back to the whirling. Finally, someone's talking sense. Now we have the task of inspecting the traps. Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down camp. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. Um, okay, I'm going. I'm going to talk to you, Gary. Hello, I'm Gary. Very generous of you to help us out, officer. Well, very kind of you to let me help you, Gary. Yellow man. I, I mean, officer. Yeah, don't call him yellow man again. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. Yellow man. Interesting. This is something to ask him about after a little probing first. I'm just first. waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. I know. We've had this conversation. Um, not a lover of the great outdoors or yeah, I'm more of a city boy too. No, are you not a lover of the great outdoors? I like nature. Just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Well, you're not wrong about that. Degenerates, this man respects authority too much to see the truth inscribed upon thine own visage. Pretend thou art a paragon of virtue. I am neither of those things, I can assure you. I am a by the books, clean as a whistle officer of the law. I'm not even tempted by tempted to touch intoxicants, drunks and degenerates, that's my crew. Or sadly, I think I might be a drunk or degenerate, maybe even both. Um, nobody's perfect. I'm sure you've been tempted to drink. Well, if there was one that said, yeah, you're right, it's just a bunch of drunks and degenerates, I, I would say that, but the only option that's even close to that is this, like, we're squeaky clean, and I'm not going to do that one, so no, we'll just go with nobody's perfect. I'm sure you've been tempted to drink oh, before. Oh, I've been tempted, but someone has to stay strong for Rivercall. Are you sure that's even how you pronounce the town? Rivercall, you said? Isn't that Revishal? Haven't we established this fact? Oh, he pronounces Revicol with a hard K, unlike other people. Okay, so I thought the game, like, was just wrong there. I thought the voice actor just got it wrong. But no, it was a... It was a planned... Planned event, okay. You said Revicol? I like to pronounce it the hard way, the old way, the Vespertine way. It's a secret right. A very fringe nationalist handshake, probably. Okay, so you're freaking racist. I gotcha. I mean, I guess we should have known when you called him Yellow Man. Um, do you know anything about... Th no, let's not say that yet. Uh, are you a cryptozoologist, too? No, no. I help Morel with research sometimes, and I've learned some things along the way. But I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. After all this time with Morel, he must have an opinion on cryptids. This could lead to a good one. I'm into cryptids. Do you have a favorite or fascinating? No. Do you have a favorite cryptid? Oh yes, the burning rhino. Morel doubts it's real, but I don't care much because I won't be the one looking for him out in Safrade Sarai. What's a burning rhino? A rhinoceros that looks ordinary during the daylight, but burns brightly by night. Well, at least the males do. Uh, how do they burn? They have special ducts just above their shoulder blades that secrete a combustible fluid. When the rhino is beginning to light itself, it looks as though it has wings of fire. I'm sure if that was a thing, that we would know about it. That's not something you're going to hide? Just like a rhino on fire? It's not a very, uh, very sneaky, subtle thing. But how is this combustible fluid lit? Uh, yeah, how does it light it? The rhino starts running very fast to build heat, and stops, raises its head, and sparks fly from its neck, setting its back ablaze. Um, that seems unlikely. I can buy into that, a flaming rhino. I want to be just like that rhino, running through the night with guns blazing. Um, that seems unlikely. Now, we can't even sugarcoat that. That seems unlikely. Yeah, well, Revacol used to be flaming rhino once, a long time ago. That seems unlikely too, doesn't it? Super solid argument, Gary. Can't argue with that. Uh, why only the males with the burning on fire thing? The flames are not just for decoration, they are an integral part of the beast's mating behavior. Well, how so? During the burning rhino's mating season, 
herds of male rhinos all aflame encircle herds of female rhinos forming a fiery ring as they begin to copulate loudly. Yeah, again, this is not something you should hide. If this was a thing, uh, there would be a camera, you know, video footage, pictures, whatever we have in this world, we would know about the freaking flaming rhino. Local peasants call it the Passion Ring. They fear the rhinos, as perhaps they should. Anyway, Lieutenant sighs without looking up from his notes. It's clear the burning rhino is dear to him on many levels, some even spiritual. Okay, uh... Do you know anything about the man hanged behind the whirling in rags? Oh, so that's what the RCM is in Martinez about. Great. Great to hear someone's finally taken care of that. So you do know something about it. No, no. Nothing. He was just some kind of mercenary. But everyone here knows that. I'm just glad to hear you're looking into it, that's all. He's not feeling very comfy in his clothes, is he? Strange. He didn't kill him or anything, but there's something going on here. So you were surprised to see my colleague, uh, Kitsuragi, the man you called Yellow Man. Not many sealites here, or anywhere other than seal. I mean no offense, truly. Do you remember how when we met Measurehead, and I said the next racist will be the really good one? Uh, yes. I don't think so. Sorry, as you know, I've been having troubles. I mean, I don't remember, but now that you've reminded me, yeah, I sort of remember that. Well, this is that racist. Are you Gary? Are you a racist? Or I don't know, I like the previous races better. Um, he is nothing compared to Measurehead. No, are you a racist, Gary? Let's just be out with it. Hey, man. All I meant was that there's not many Seolites around here. I'm just stating facts. Uh, do you have a problem with Seolites? The lieutenant is a native of Revishal. Hey, what are they doing in that Seol of theirs? Scheming? No, the lieutenant is a native. He lives here. Oh yes, of course he is. I was just speaking about uh, his connections. Let's change the subject, okay? Yeah, okay, so you just want to stop being racist. Sure, I gotcha. Um, so this, is this your mug? The mug that we found in the trash with the yellow man on it. Is this your mug? My mug? Why would you think that? His eyes widen at the sight of the mug. He's seen it before, all right. You said yellow man. That's not something many people go around saying. It seems as if you were calling to it longingly when you cried, Yellow man, I can see you recognize it. It's in your eyes. Um, no, I can see. If we got the success, let's go for it. I can see you know what this is, sir. I may have had a similar looking mug in the past, that's all. Just admit it, man, you put the mug in the trash container. Still seems suspicious. Did I mention the mug was found at the scene of a lynching? Or, all right, I believe you. You look like the kind of man who knows it's a crime to lie to an officer. No, um, just admit it. You put it there, dude. Maybe, maybe. Okay, yes, I did. I know I shouldn't have, and I'm very sorry, officer. You're not going to find me, are you? Um, I am for 20 real. I am for 100 real. I am for 250 real. Or, not Gary. I just want information. First of all, I don't... Is having a racist mug illegal? I don't know if it's illegal in this context. How did you put it in the trash thing if you didn't have the key? That's the really the question I want to know. Um, but also, I just want to kind of just make you sweat. I want you to think that I have something on you, but I really just want more information. I just want information, Gary. Oh, thank you. You won't regret this. I won't ever use another man's property to dump my garbage ever again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn Kokyo's price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? Nothing, nothing. Just answering some questions, helping out the law. Uh, how did you get into the trash container? How did you get in there? Did you have a key? I know a guy who works with trash collection services, CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. And why would you need one of those? So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. 
the damn Hemians run it like a mob. Okay, like, can we just stop with the, what I'm assuming is racial slurs? I'm sorry, okay, I thought it could cut costs. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have disgraced myself. Disgraced? No need for the histrionic, sir. It was, after all, just a trash container. He studies his reaction. Gary doesn't answer. Okay, well, did you put the clothes of the murder victim in the trash container as well, Gary? Officer, please, let me explain. It's not like that. Okay, yeah, do explain. Please, Gary. I was only cleaning up. I live across from the yard from where he was hanged, and I saw him stripped naked. All the clothes laying around in the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, what happened? Or Okay, then what? Let's call me. Then what happened, Gary? Then I came out to clean up the rags because no one else would. I put them in the whirling trash, along with a broken mug, admittedly. He changes his mind mid-sentence. Okay, I was coming to throw the mug away, and well, I threw the mug there and the clothes too. Right, it was just civic duty. Exactly, that's exactly what it was, my civic duty. As he shifts uncomfortably, a series of clicks, like the clinking of glass beads against one another as they roll across a hardwood floor. You've heard that sound before, but where? Oh, okay. Um, he's got a piece of the armor. What's that strange sound? Or you wouldn't know anything about the victim's missing armor, would you? Uh, what's that strange sound? Uh, Gary? What sound? Uh... That clinking sound I just heard when you moved. Don't mess with me. I think you know what I'm talking about. No, let's push him. Don't mess with me. You know exactly what I'm talking about, Gary. I have it the slightest. There's lots of weird stuff out here in the reeds. Insects, trash. Could be the wind shifting some garbage nearby. Every day, the wind shifts the reeds and some, whatever was left in them. Tambourines and condom wrappers. Plastic and glass bottles. Smell of decay. The sound you heard was not the sound of something easily abandoned. Okay, um... You wouldn't know anything about the, uh, missing armor, would you, Gary? Armor? No, I mean, yes, of course, I know he was wearing armor, but I don't know anything about it. An infant can see he's not telling the truth, but he's too scared to admit more wrongdoing. Okay, so I guess I should have played coy with him. Can I go back and do that? Um, there was that clinking sound I heard. Really? He fans his arms out slowly, and this time his motions are soundless. Okay, so, something going on with you, Gary. I hope I can help your investigation in my small way. Is this a red or is this a white check? It's a white check for composure. 58% chance, and I don't know if we have anything that increases our composure. So, um, let's go for it. Why is he shifting around like that? Let's analyze Gary's composure. 58% chance. Yes! We needed a 14. We got exactly a 14. Alright. That shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together, as if something is ready to rip out from underneath. His massive musculature? Or something worn underneath. No, he's, he's definitely wearing the chest piece. Yes, like a piece of ceramic armor, for example. One that makes a clicking sound when the plates meet each other. Uh, this is the wrong use of the word meet. That should be M-E-E-T. Uh, resembling pearls or marbles stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. I see you're a connoisseur of high quality combat gear, Gary. He freezes, then sighs heavily. I knew you'd figure it out, officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I was... He unbuttons his shirt. You see gleaming white ceramic shine underneath. A thin layer of interlocking plates covers his gaunt torso. I was ashamed of what I did, and I didn't want you to know. We're not detecting faults, heard Sire. He's gearing up to admit the truth. Gary, what's going on? Later, Morel. I've got apologizing to do. No, you've got some explaining to do. Ooh, Kim. Ooh. Um... Why did you put the clothes in the trash, Gary? Why'd you really do it? Everyone was picking those pieces off him, and I was watching them do it. 
and they scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling. So I went up there to take my trash and I started cleaning up all those rags on the ground. Him swinging up there and I had a lapse of honor, sir. I thought he's a foreigner. They all say he wasn't from here. Only the cross was left. So I stripped him of it. It was early in the morning. No one saw me. I took it with me. It was a mistake. Had I known it'd give you guys trouble, I wouldn't have. Fuck. We're detecting sincere contrition, sir. He's not trying to flatter anyone. It's okay. It was just a loose end, and you're tying it up now. I'm so fucking sorry I called you yellow man. Sea light officers commanded the suzerain's navy. Most of them sided with the king when they were thoroughly conservative men, he realized suddenly. Um, why did you lie to me, Gary? Because I was weak. I shouldn't have... Should have told you the moment I saw you, but... The hell, Gary? You in trouble? I'll explain later. Um, just give me the armor, G Gary, please. He sighs again, hangs his head, and unbuttons his shirt fully. A cross that measures the, matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon it's in your hands, smelling of his sweat. But so, so light to hold, like a bag of cotton. And do you know who killed the hangman, Gary? I always thought it was the Union. Some Union hard asses lynched him because of the strike. But almost everyone in town knows that. I wish I could tell you more. That's all he knows. Okay, well done, Gary. Task completed of who put the clothes in the trash. And we've leveled up again. We've leveled up twice in these last couple conversations. Yes, absolutely. I will never do anything like this again. Uh, thank you for your cooperation. So let's check out those items then. Uh, clothes. What did we pick up? The, here it is. Looks a little... I'm not... I'm a little concerned it looks a, a bit like a straight jacket in here. Uh, plus one pain threshold. Plus one volition. Minus one empathy. Well, we'll just leave that in case we need it sometime. But we have... Plenty of skill points, so let's see, what do we want to... The Wompty Dompty Dom Center, I even forgot what that was. Oh yeah, that was the guy who was telling us about something called the Wompty Dompty Dom Center. We can learn about the armor. We can become a magnesium-based life form. The King of Conscious, uh, Coach Physical Instrument. We've almost finished Guillaume Le Mignon. Um, let's look back at Wompty Dompty Dom. It's Wednesday evening and something heinously exciting is underway. People have gathered underneath the billowing roof of an oddly shaped trophy building, sipping wine and exchanging opinions. 29-year-old Wonder Twins, Guy and Keith Eust, are the stars of the show with their bomber jackets and white sneakers, head curators of this art exhibit. It's the Wompty Dompty... The Wompty Domdy Domdiest event of the year and all the cool kids have RSVP'd. Where are you if you're not there? Yeah, sure. Um, minus one suggestion for being an outsider, but it's only 42 minutes. So, you know what? Unlock. Un unlock. Internalize Wompty Dompty Dom. We still have three points. God, that was so many different thoughts. Like, there's all these different thoughts that we haven't even found. And we've almost maxed out our thought cabinet. Okay, so I think, well, let's actually go back and check this here. What is this? A buoy bobs in the water. A number on it says 11. Okay. That was kind of useless, but uh, I think I'm going to start heading back towards the town. I'll take this money. A boat in the boathouse. No boat in the boathouse today. This section of the coast hasn't been used in decades. Take uh, some Hypnogamma for plus three morale. Take plus one Savile Fair, minus one Visual Calculus. We get from the oversized Superstar Sunglasses. Okay, I'm just going to... Uh, kind of scope this place out. Well, I was just going to head straight back, but since we're here... Oh, that's one of the traps, huh? Okay. 
Take the money. This boathouse is shoddily constructed. A strong breeze might blow it over. Let's check the trap. Is there any cryptids in there? There's a trap in the reeds at your feet. Looks like the same one you saw Morel set before. Same mesh, same wiring. Okay, look around. Behind you, a ruined residential building looms over the reeds, shielding them from the wind. They rustle confidently, in tune with the pitter-patter of the rain. When this district was booming, the reeds were kept at bay. Nothing obscured the freshly painted facades. Nowhere for drunks and adventurous teenagers to hide. Now only the wind blows. Well, let's look at the trap. Locusts are crawling around in the trap, confused but uneaten. You see no, no carnivorous reed phasmid gorging on them. Big surprise. Anyway, one down, three to go. Damn, I was hoping it would be in the first one. No need to grin. I'm not expecting to find anything. I'm just helping some citizens, getting some fresh air. It'll be the next one, surely. Um, I'm, re I'm really not expecting anything, but we're just helping. I meant no offense, just the lieutenant doesn't know how to finish the sentence. He looks at you, putting the trap back on the ground. Okay. Well, let's just head back, because I need to do some things. Okay, I won't read all this stuff. We'll leave this for later. A lot of stuff to check out later. Oh, we can't go that way, huh? Okay, so we can only go in here from the back. I gotcha. Alright, we'll, we'll look at that later. We'll come back to here. I want to do some things out. I want to make the long trek back towards the whirling because I need to show the badge to uh, what's her face the the wild pines rep and I need to call in this other death over the radio what's this purple thing Did we already I'm sure we already checked this purple thing we did not check this purple thing. Not sure how we didn't already check that purple thing. Whatever. Um, can we just head out? How do you get back out of here? Like this, I guess. Sounds of life in the north. A washboard scrums filth from pepper. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you for uh, reminding me of that. Because I need... I have this dirty jacket. Right? Where's the dirty jacket? Where's the really gross jacket? Is that not a thing I can wear, but I just have? Yeah, this thing. The filthy jacket. As you hold it in your hands, it makes an uncomfortable crunching sound. Why did I fondle the shit jacket again? There's no idea why. Let's just put it away. Um, I want to give it back to this dude, but also I want to see if the washerwoman will wash it clean first. Hey, lady. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? I found this jacket, but it's filthy. Could you wash it for me? I can wash it for you, but it's going to take about half an hour... Think you can stay put for that long? Sure. Um, I could use a breather. It's been another track and field day. <laughs> yeah, we've been running a lot. I know. Um, yeah, I'll wait. Well, I'll hand it over then, and I'll see what I can do. I wish I could have just given it to you, and then walked away, and then I can come back, and I, so I can still do this stuff in this half an hour, but sure. Must say I'm proud of this one. It's pretty nice underneath all that filth. I hope you take better care of it than its last owner. So we got the FALN Windbreaker. Uh, thank you very much. Plus one pain threshold. Plus one half light. Minus one drama. This windbreaker is like a protective cocoon. Placing the wearer's torso in a pocket universe where wind, water, dirt, and fire cannot harm them. Huge riding. 100% synthetic. Is proudly displayed on the chest. It lets absolutely no air through. Warning, not actually fireproof. Well, I could wear it, or I could do what I said I was going to do and give it back to this gentleman. And since we're a nice, honest cop, here you go, sir. I have the jacket. I even washed it for you, sir. Tequila Sunset. Yes. Hello, Idiot Doom Spiral. 
Here is your jacket. Freshly washed, sir. My jacket? Yeah, it was pretty filthy, though, so I got it clean for you. He looks at- the look of consternation crosses the man's face. He looks at you, then at his bottle, then back at you. What the fuck are you talking about, Tequila? What the fuck are you talking about? Uh, so you're saying this isn't your jacket? F-A-L-N? That's medium concept stuff. Not my style at all. I can't believe I'm saying this, but maybe you should lay off the booze. It's fucking with your head. It becomes abundantly clear to you how this man managed to lose his keys, business, friends, and girlfriend. I'm calling it... It's neurological. Um... Your loss. I'm keeping this jacket for myself. Or, I went through some dark shit to get this for you. Take the fucking jacket. No, no. I mean... If he's gonna insult us and say he doesn't want it, then I'm taking it. I'm keeping it. So we did the task. We got plus 10 experience and plus 5 experience for some reason. That shit is so medium concept I wouldn't touch it with a stick. But yeah, okay. I'm sure it looks great on you. It's an okay jacket if you're into that look. Okay, be seeing you later then. Okay, let's step aside for a second. I have something I want to talk about. What do you want to talk, Kim? Oh, well, let's do the thought first. Guillaume les Mion. Bad news. Guillaume les Mion did not become a cop. In 38, he went on tour to the Xinyao province in Safra, where he managed and where he died of autoerotic asphyxiation. His body was found hanging from a decorative dragon tree in his junior suite amid drug paraphernalia, unwholesome objects, and the Sylvia Trainer single, Wonderland, skipping in the background. And yes, you can take this as a metaphor for Revishal in the 30s, and it's also a warning. Plus, we, we gained plus one pain threshold, because blood oxygen is boring. And we got all uh, the PSY, I think that's the physicality, maybe? Or, I don't know if that's physicality or psych. Um, learning caps raised by one. Okay, so that was a thing that happened. Let's check our stats. I guess it was... I don't know which one. No, I guess it was uh, Psyche then. Because now we can upload... We can bump these up. But we really want... Well, we want authority. Because we have to do what? Authority to get that guy to listen to us? Um, the guy in the Whirling Pines? Was it authority? I think it was authority. We'll, we'll leave this alone for now. What do you want? Uh, we'll come over here to talk, Kim. What do you want, Kim? No, let's not talk to these kids. What do you want, Kim? Kim? I've been meaning to have a little chat with you about your sense of style. What do you mean, my style, Kim? I'm glad you finally started dressing a little more like an officer of the RCM. Keep it up. Regular cop, regular clothes. You like this? I feel like it's really crap for my style. Say, why... Say, why aren't you wearing a pig suit? Um... No, why aren't you wearing a, a uniform, Kim? Officers above the rank of sergeant are granted wide discretion when it comes to their uniforms. The idea is that civilians are more likely to open up to someone who's not dressed like a typical cop. You know the expression, the clothes make the man, right? The right outfit and the right situation can make all the difference in the world. Um, okay, you're a sharp dressing man. I could be style buddies with you, or I'm not taking style tips from someone who dresses like a mega binoclard. Uh, no, I could take some style tips from you, Kim. Looking fine in that orange jacket. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Detective. A warm smile. Anyways, we should probably get back to the case. Um, that's kind of... Kind of a weird... Segue there. A little odd, uh... Interruption. Okay, this episode's going a little long. But I wanna... Okay, what do you... What? 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 A creaking ahead. A broken axle is grinding. Oh, you, you mean like... Our... Yeah, we know. The broken axle of our car. We gotcha. There's another trap.
A familiar apparatus lies among the reeds. Another one of Morel's traps, weighed down by stones to keep it in place. All right, let's have a look around. The reeds bend forlornly towards the sand. Some tufts have been crushed. The broken stalks seem like a rebuke. The sound of the city center hums in the east. The constant near, or constant distant song, louder in this part of the coast, nearer somehow. And then there's that cold again, always the cold. Well, let's look in the trap. This trap is also full of panicked locusts. No signs of any cryptozoological beasts inside. Um, another empty trap, says the lieutenant. Let's keep going. The next one is a lucky one. Or how are you enjoying the cardio, lieutenant? I'm quite enjoying it myself. Again, I want to make it absolutely clear that I don't really believe the phasma exists, okay? Um, let's say nothing. I wonder if there's a way to make the phasma like, actually exist. Like, if we had never said... He doesn't exist. I'm just playing this up. Can we go in here? We have been in here already. Yeah. No, we haven't been in here because we didn't take the Jamrock Biker Cop Sunnies. Plus one empathy, minus one logic. Like I was picking up all this stuff that I'm never wearing, but it's all, uh... It's all contextual. We need to wear it at the right time. But what I think I was saying, I don't know if I finished my thought, was... Like, I wonder if we had been very, like, pro-cryptid the whole time. They're like, oh yes, the cryptid totally exists. And... We're definitely gonna find it. I wonder if you can actually find it. But, because at some point we said, like, we don't believe it. Does that change the game's programming? To say we, we won't find it then. Okay, so we need to call in this other... First, we need to find out a couple things. We need to find out about the armor, and we also need to call in this other this other body that we've just kind of been ignoring. Uh, let's pull out the radio. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Uh, hello, Alice. Uh, did you find out more about the armored boots? Still no word, I'm afraid, sir. I know it must be frustrating. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? How long is it going to take, Alice? Um, I need to report a dead body on the Martinez boardwalk. One moment. You can hear her shuffling through some papers. Can you describe the body, age, sex, cause of death? An unidentified, middle-aged man, height 170 to 175 centimeters, dark hair, medium build. Looks like he slipped, fell through a hole in the boardwalk, and hit his head against the metal bench. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell... There were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any signs of violence? Um, nope. Seems like it was an accident. I mean, someone might have pushed him, but we have no idea. No reason. Seems like it was an accident. No field autopsy necessary. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? He was wearing boots, trousers, and an old leather jacket with bright blue lining. I found a library card from his pockets. So again... I wonder if we had said that maybe he was pushed, like, would this open up to a much larger investigation? Any information on the library card? It's from Central Jamrock Public Library. It belongs to someone named Billy Mejon. Good, you have a lead. Do you and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? We're taking the case. I have assigned the case to Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting this. Is there anything else I could do? No. Connect me to the public library, please. I've got Central Jamrock Public Library on the line, and I've already introduced you to their librarian. Connecting the call in two, one. Yes, this is Central Jamrock Public Library here. A male librarian answers the call. How can I help you, officer? I'm looking for any information that you have on Billy Magine, a reader. Billy, Billy Magine, you said. Uh, give me a moment. I'll have to check our database. On Marrow Drive in Central Jamrock, in a darkened hall lit by orange desk lamps far away from the noise outside, a middle-aged man taps commands into an old radio computer. A printout falls on the desk. Behind him, a lonely reader scours some dusty bookshelves, looking for a paperback. Yes, hello. Are you still there? I found Billy Mijun's home address. Is that all right? No phone number, unfortunately. They're too poor to have a phone line. I mean, how do you know he's too poor to have a phone line? Maybe he just didn't give one. Um, yes, home address is fine. I'm really not that good with addresses. No, home address is fine. 
Here we go, sir. Rue de Saint Islaine, 33B. Hey, we know where that's at. 33B, apartment number 20. Um, it's in Martinez, I believe. Cape Side Apartments. Yeah, we know exactly where it is. Uh, 33B. Maybe we should have done this before we called it in. Because maybe we'd find out more in apartment number 20. That's where the smoker on the balcony lives, isn't it? Um, do you have any other information? It says here that they returned the last book a few days ago, but it wasn't. At, but I wasn't at work that day. Uh, do you know someone who was? Marie? Marie, do you remember a reader named Billy Magin? They turned a Tibolt book. The, they returned a Tibolt book the other day. Uh, Maurice, what? Oh yes, yes. If it was the police, yes, it was my colleague Marie. She said that it was Billy's husband who returned the book. Uh, he also asked about this new sci-fi release, Loose Radio City 87, but we don't have it yet. Good, you have a name now. So Billy Machine is a woman, not a man? Or how did your colleague know that it was her husband? Do you know the husband's name? Can Marie describe to me how the husband, what the husband looked like? Um, I mean, it could have been a gay couple. It doesn't have to be a woman. Uh, do you know the husband's name? Sorry, no. Can Marie describe to me how the husband, how he looked? Marie, she said it was an older man, and that she's pretty sure he had a drink or two the last time she saw him. What was he wearing? Uh, sorry, wasn't really paying attention. Okay, so, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't normally say this because it's it's kind of awkward, uh, but as a cop, I think it's our responsibility to know, are we talking about a male or a female? Let's just confirm. Um, is Billy a woman and not a man? Marie knows Billy. She's been working here for longer than me. Sometimes her husband returns some books for her. Her husband. Oh, so that wasn't... I'm so confused. So the guy we found was the husband because not Billy. Okay, thank you. Um Thank you. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's Let's do the wompty wompty dom whatever thing. You're at home, stupid cop. Not with the art crowd. You hate them. Everyone hates them. Even they hate themselves. It's nauseating. An industry built on sprezzatura and sparkling wine. And let's not be honest, tax evasion schemes. The wompty dompty dom center is the heart of this unholy symbiosis of aesthetics and tax optimization. And now that you've internalized it, you can have a piece too. Um, Encyclopedia passives give plus 10 experience and plus 2 real, but I get minus 2, su two suggestion because I'm a pretentious wanker. Well, that's lovely. Well, thank you. Pretentious wanker. Alright, well, I don't think because this episode's running really long, I don't think we're going to have time to really talk to the Wild Pines rep about our badge. Instead, what I'm going to do is try to give this grouse to uh, Karta here. Can I help you? Um, yes. I found a new bird for the whirling. Here, have this rustled, ruffled grouse. What is this thing? The man takes the stuffed bird. Well, it's no biggie. I just thought it would look nice on the wall. I'm that kind of cop. What? <laughs> the interior decorating kind? He inspects the bird somewhat suspiciously, then mellows. You know, I'm sorry. This is actually a nice bird. A competent piece of taxidermy. Secret task. Take the stuffed bird to Garta. I can fix it to the plaque and have a new bird in the establishment, I guess. So, I don't know. Thank you? I'm going to go with thank you. I feel good about our work here today. It's all about the little things, like bringing people random stuffed animals. Well, it's not exactly about that, but he liked it. Okay, goodbye. I'm not going to talk to Lena yet. I mean, I guess I could, but I don't want to. Not until we finish the whole thing. 
because he was supposed to be coming this way, right? I don't want to interrupt and so I'll break the quest chain. So what we will do instead is we will make our way to the Wild Pines rep and we won't talk to her until next episode. Well, before we do that, I want to check this wall. Can I draw something on the wall now? Because we know about murals. We have a 17% chance and it's a white check. Cindy's artistic impulses are infectious. Uh, conceptualization. Yeah, so that's a really hard one to pull off. So I'll talk to this lady next episode when we haven't already been recording for over an hour. But thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again next time.